What is the what is the story? Um, it's a tricky one to start off with. Though. Pardon? It's a tricky one to start off. With. No, it's a good one. It'll get my brain clear. I think um, it's quite hard always to explain what a story is about um, because it starts going off on all sorts of different avenues. But a brief, like an umbrella yeah, of, of the whole thing. It's quite complicated. Uh, it's quite a complicated story. It's a, technically it's a buddy movie. It's about two two people who become friends, united. Um, through a, a a court case, um, which God, what the fuck is it about? <laughs> like, we'll, we'll, get to we'll that go one. again. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that one. That is a really tough one. Because um, well, Stuart's um, really a complicated character because we have uh, there's so he's multifaceted. There's so many things going on in his life, which. Um, which is great, so it's a real meal, you know, but um, for a performer. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very mercutial character. Um, he's a very mercutial character, mercurial character. Like, um, <laughs> fuck. It's, really, it's a really complex piece, actually. Um, He's not one thing. He's a that was a Jekyll and Hyde character who has um, he's is a, is an addict. He has muscular dystrophy. He's sexually abused, physically abused. Um, he's violent. He's a criminal. At the same time, he's incredibly sensitive. He's um, he's actively involved in very much so in the understanding and expression of his predicament and his situation and, and and very very polite you know and gentle as well to um, I mean with women for example he's very polite with women and uh, he has incredibly good manners but at the same time he carries knives and and he self harms and um, has a tremendous um, capacity for, for pain and um, an understanding and compassion and then he has his brilliant ideas and he's, he's a mess really he's an absolutely he's a, a wonderful and complicated mess of a, of a, of a human being it, tragic and incredible at the same time incredibly honest as well it's such you know, an ability to be completely unapologetically honest um, comes with a, a heavy price, a heavy cost, you know, to be so innocent and pure in many ways. Um, he's, there were so many faces to Stuart, and yet it's so absolutely simple. <laughs> you know, he doesn't. In the playing of him, he doesn't lie. He doesn't have to lie. He unapologetically tells the truth, but there are certain truths which are harder to tell than others. But. Um, so, what we have, I mean, technically, it's, it's a very damaged young man. Um, but, it's, uh, but, but I think it also is, it, but in the playing of, of that, it's, it's very, it, it can be very easy to bang a lot of gongs, um, like the abuse or the muscular dystrophy or um, the drugs addiction or being drunk all the time or being violent. Uh, there's a lot of flags. There, which you can latch, which you know, one could latch onto and, and and play to the hilt, but it, it seems to be daring to be average and honest and maintain a, 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 a finding the truth in all this chaos and these quite um, these scenarios, situations which are incredibly dramatic and incredibly high um, tension and uh, often horrific. Um, horrific baggage that he carries. Um, it's a question of multitasking that inside the head to live constantly in the moment to cope with simple things like washing machines and um, gyro checks and, and turning up on time to things and management, just practical management in everyday life. It's very ordinary. It's a very ordinary guy with an incredible amount of baggage. Um, trying to break out of all the baggage um, constantly and trying to help and, and often is the way you know like when um, 
when I found anyway, people who have got an incredible amount of backstory, an incredible amount of pain, and stuff to sift through of their own, their own baggage. You know, it's a lot easier to look at other people's. You know, so I can fix you, but uh, I have no idea how to apply that to myself, nor if that's what I want necessarily. Sometimes it's a lot easier to sit in a pain and a hell that I know than it is to to break out of that because where would I go? Um, so there's a, there's a kind of stoicism as well um, to him. He's a problem solver. And then there's constantly, we meet same familiar faces and these, these each familiar face, with, you know, whether it's an abuse situation or um, the, the issues that come up for Stuart um, from, from, from just my, um, from what I, what I um, from my study of him, there are certain ones that are harder to diffuse and dismantle than others. They're going to take more complicated work on, and, and everything is connected to everything. Oh, they are now. Can I just stop you for a second? Because I've got to take a phone call. Well, um, I, I, like, I don't know how, you know, like, um, aware uh, viewers are of, like, you know, the circuit of, you know, what actors get up to. But we, you know, tend to, you know, if we're lucky to get an agent or, you know, Get a, get, a, get a look in on jobs that are going around. We, we go out and tend to cast for them. No, we get called into a casting. And we're presented with a, with a or dispatched a, 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 some sides of dialogue, or maybe a whole script if we're lucky. Or, um, and, then, uh, and then we go in for an audition. Uh, on this particular case, um, my agent sent me um, a, uh, an email of the book. <laughs> so it's a, a whole book. And, uh, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't manage to digest that by the next day. Oh, sorry, um, a couple of days. And I was told about it. Said, look, this guy is. Um, there's a brilliant, brilliant film being done about um, a, a wonderful character. It's so sad. It's really funny. It's lovely, and you'd be perfect for it. And um, uh, <laughs> it's, it's about an, an alcoholic, addicted, uh, psychopathic, street person, and. Um, with a, a fondness for little strips of silver, um, and it's right up your alley. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, so I went in on an audition and met David and Pippa, uh, who's the director and the producer uh, at Neil Street Productions, with uh, um, and Andy Pryor, who cast me and Gideon's daughter with Stephen Polyakov. Um, and I went in. I, I got a copy of the script, and I, and I read it. And uh, immediately, I was taken with the amount of damage there was to um, to the house that needed repairing. If I was going to go in, in, you know, to give my mental quote on what needed to be done to to fix the house that is Stuart, as it were, you know, and what work that would entail. So it was a prelim meeting to say. I responded to the work very well. I, I love it, um, and it's right up my alley. The, the, um, and there's a there was a lot of issues, key issues with the character and with the world that I'm I'm very um, I'm very involved um, personally uh, in in a large a large part of of, of the character of Stuart in my own personal life. And so I felt very drawn towards the material and the humour, actually, and the truth and the honesty of it. So I, I, um, I, I went and had a long, rambling, as you can imagine, chat with, uh, with the uh, director and Pippa and about my fears of it as well. To say, look, you know, um, like I said earlier, there's a lot of gongs that could be banged. There, you know. What's so terrifying is there's a physical life for an actor. I mean. He suffers from muscular dystrophy from an early age, so obviously, with any anything, my, my worry is, what does that look like? What does that like? Um, how we, the research on that, I know nothing about. I know nothing about muscular dystrophy. Child abuse, I, I know nothing about child abuse. I've not been abused as a child sexually, um, that, I, that I know of. Um, Certain other aspects of the character, I have um, fleeting and very deep, um, very very deep understanding of, 
um, a couple of parts of the, uh, from uh, uh, there's addiction, um, physical abuse, violence, um, and police um, trouble, etc. Um, and I used to, for my own uh, part, play a lot at, at um, being disenfranchised as a younger boy when when I didn't really know what I was on about. So, I, I mean, I, I had um, I, I accrued a various amount of research on, if you can call it research, in my early days, formative years, do you know what I mean, uh, with all kinds of people. Uh, and even to present day, I'm involved very heavily with um, with um, people with drug addiction and, uh, and alcohol addiction and violence and, um, and stories as such. Um, then another angle um, which I didn't have any experience of necessarily is, uh, is care and um, homelessness and outreach. I don't know about that, so that was a worry. That's a very specific... It's like in Black Hawk Down, for example, you know, like, the, you know, the soldiers were going to be watching us stripping weapons and putting them back together again, and they're going to, like in a boxing movie, boxers are going to look at us and say, look, that, technically that's off. Homeless people are going to, the homeless are going to know that's rubbish. If, <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're going to be a very tough judge. It's like children will tell you if you're, you know, if they think you're, you're not telling the truth they'll let you know very quickly they can be very harsh critics so there was a lot of anger you know a, a, a immediate um, points of when I say damage you know, like worry worry spots when I said look in order to create a character from this material which is fantastic I mean these all of these parts of the piece of the puzzle before we even start taking this character on a story the the buddy you know the the friendship story, the writing the book story, the getting to know another human being, and then um, what Stuart does tells him everything about himself. Alexander writes a book about Stuart. Stuart comes clean about everything and processes a tremendous amount of history and information to this 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 um, character who wrote the book, Alexander Masters. Um, there was an awful lot of subterranean activity and deep work, core work that had to be done on him that I needed to know and that was a worry, you know. Not to mention that this guy's the guy just died <laughs> and you know and and we're not talking about a fictitious character. Which gives you a freedom of a different sort. Yeah. I'm gonna meet Mum. I'm going to work with Alexander who wrote it. Benedict playing Alexander, so a man who's still alive. The writer's very much around. It's an awful lot of Diplomacy and, and politics, social politics and interaction that has to be done. And how and we've got six weeks. <laughs> so there's a clock ticking and plus, you know, it's it's a movie or a film or whatever, you know. Whatever way we approach however much we want to be honest and truthful and on it we have a story to tell and you know, we want people to watch it and enjoy it and you know you can't beat people over the head with 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 uh, issues which are to a great amount uh, distasteful and painful and and very very heavy so uh, that's why it's very important for it to be and is you know uh, very light and comic at times uh, in order to I suppose I mean, without shadow of a doubt, give people an opportunity to watch something which is horrific if they had to live it and enjoy it. Laugh along and then, then go away and, and, and um, dismantle what it is that they've, they've watched. Or, if that's not what they, they're inclined to do, at least they have the opportunity to do that and enjoy a very light and funny tragic comedy. It's a very complex piece. And, uh, and to do it with taste and integrity is, is, is a bugger, really. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but it's the type of challenge that I, I, I really, really, really love. It's a, I'm really, really excited about it. Yeah, um, I mean, the research involved was that if we take all the corners, <laughs> again, it go back to, the, I mean, like, um, drug addiction and alcoholism and blah, blah, blah. That one, fine. <laughs> do you know, that's not, that's, not, that's not my main problem at all. Um, my big fear was meeting mum mm. and muscular dystrophy. 
I think with with uh, an illness, it's really important that you, especially with a disability, uh, with a, with actors who have disabilities, prominently should and quite rightly be playing roles where. You know, they, it, it, it says if, if the man is disabled of any shape or form, surely an actor with that disability should be in the in the in the pilot seat, as it were. So um, I think it's very hard to to talk about something unless you live it. Um, but we do. But then enter imagination. What could it be like? Imagine. But I think there's a certain truth in if an actor has something, uh, be it you know alcoholism, be it you know. Um, I don't know, HIV or having been to a war, and they're an actor now, if they can bring something to the table from their experience that's entirely valid and very important, and it's an incredibly useful resource, as long as we don't dwell solely in that, in that zone. Um, and, and a lot of us have something for nothing, you know, um, to offer and bring to the table, that's why we're here, um, or get down to the final five or whatever, but there are going to be things which I, the, the, the performer knows nothing about and then has to, has to research. I, mean, I don't know. If, I don't know if I can make this, the, um, the statement to say were they happy that the project's being made uh, um, because it's transient. Are they, are they happy that I'm playing the part? And I don't think that was uh, the, the, what was what I'm getting at. I think what I'm saying is that they're in a process. The family, the film is part of that process. I happen to be part of that process. I'm sitting on the sofa drinking their tea, and it doesn't. It, they're telling me what's going on, and they were forthcoming with that information as opposed to me having to to push them for that. And, uh, and on the one hand, that was quite disconcerting. But when I checked myself and thought, why is that? That's perfectly normal. I mean, in, you can't live in trauma all the time and be, you know, proactively be part of, of a, a functioning life. You know, I, I either isolate and, and rot in, in the pain of it and dwell in, in the discomfort or the, the necessity to get up and out and move on and to develop and grow with that seemed to be more evident. As a family, it was, it, the tenacity of the family is, is something incredibly powerful. You know, um, in the recovery of the family, I mean, I, I worry that, I heard that since, the, since Stuart died, there's been the book, the book has done well, then there's the film, then there doesn't seem to have been a time to, for actually them to have mourned Stuart. Stuart hasn't actually died yet, in many ways. So in one way, it's, it's a very odd um, and s special thing to be a part of, actually. You know, and, 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 and as much as the responsibility is there to do the, the job well, because these people are really important, and the story is, in, is vitally important to each one of them. And I've been asked to play, play, <laughs> technically to play. Um, I think it's really interesting to to be a part of a journey and a discovery which is still in transition with these people and there's only so much that I can do you know um, well Nicola and Claire Louise I don't get to work with much so I think they're fantastic actors and really strong and I, and I, and I, and I admire their work and I think they're brilliant and um, I definitely want to work with them again because we haven't had enough time to, to really work together on this, on this project. My, my, um, but I think they're brilliant, brilliant actors, definitely. My, um, my boy is Benedict well, and, uh, and, I, and he's, he's brilliant actually. Um, and it's not blowing smoke up his ass, like brilliant as in like, he's a nice bloke, but he has a sensibility and uh, an oddness to him and a directness and a fantastic sense of humour which he, he, in many ways we're very, very similar in our approach to work, um, our conscious. So I respect him as, as um, on a pretty fundamental level of like going into the, the inverted commas battle or into trenches or whatever with him. I feel very confident that I've got somebody who's supportive and very able to throw in um, what, what I would call next level choices. 
So once you, you, you say the script, you don't bump to the furniture, then you try and take it off the page, then there's another level where you can actually play with something. And he's, an, an, he's, he's definitely a, he's a, in, an actor that has an ability to play in the, in the sort of the outer field of basic acting work. Do you know what I mean? So as a professional speaking, he is a, a very, he's a very generous, very sensitive, very thoughtful, focused, disciplined actor. And you know that when you work with somebody like that, you, you're just like playing with, you know, like Ronnie Scott's with you know, fucking BB King. You know, you've got somebody who's it's just a question of when or if. You know, you know when someone's got it, and he's got it, and that's you know, I'm comfortable with people who've got it. Um, allows me to um, to be free to do whatever I need. I need to do. I don't isolate in a bubble act. I think it's really important to bounce off another person. Get you, I mean, have your have your work, your shit together, you know, so that you can come on set and, and then take it to that next level. And it's so nice not having to drag someone along with you, carry someone on. <laughs> I'm terribly arrogant, but it, you know, it's a real bugger. Do you know what I mean? If you get held up with, you know, the slow bloke. <laughs> you know I mean? And uh, it's totally on PC, but you know, there's you know. Um, not everybody runs in the Olympics. You know, Benny should be running in the Olympics. And if not, you know, I th I can see an Olympic runner in him. You know, um, but then who am I? You know, he is brilliant as well. Um, I feel very very safe with him. And then Stuart is a very difficult part to play because um, at the risk of just my pure vanity of feeling embarrassed and vulnerable and silly and just not, like messing it all up because I haven't. Um, the natural neurosis that comes with being an actor anyway. Uh, just, you know, I'm useless. I'm, I'm, you know, does my bum look big in this type of thing? He has a tremendous ability to... Um, to create a safe and comfortable environment to work in and a friendly, friendly environment to work in as well, which allows uh, creative choices to be made. The worst thing is that there's nothing worse than getting creatives into a room and telling them they have to do something. <laughs> just, just leave. No, because they're all leaders. You know, all creatives are leaders in their own way. They're all rebels. And they're all. Uh, that's why they're creative. You know what I mean, they'll do what they want to do. And I think you know, the magic of this is we've got a really good script, really strong story, wonderful people um, that it's about in real life, and such a charming. Uh, and the DOP author is also incredibly, incredibly gifted, incredibly skilled. The team is incredibly skilled and gifted, um, with the right amount of charm and, and professionalism that makes it really special. There's a, a level of ease that comes into the rooms when we're working uh, to allow everybody to do their job and at a speed where he's moving really fast as well. I mean, he's, he's, he knows exactly what he wants, um, David Atwood. Uh, he's incredibly quick to get what he wants. And yeah, it's almost like we're, it's, it's, we're having fun all the time, and that's a, it can be a very dangerous sense of like, you know, are we are we are we going are we doing things wrong? Because it's nice. I enjoy coming to work. Is there a problem? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Have I done something wrong? But he has a, 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 a tremendous uh, ability to get the goods, but without forcing that issue. I've worked with directors who like go, well, it's all about the result, and put you through trauma. And so, well, to be honest, you would probably got the result anyway. To me, you're just open and honest, and and he has that ability to. Um, to he knows what it's like to work with creatives. It's a very hard. It's a very hard situation. I mean, it's like you know, you touch it and it vanishes. <laughs> it's situational. You know, it's like when things are really on top, someone will say something. It's not that heavy. Because if it is that heavy, then we might as well just fucking stop and kill ourselves right now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's that, it's that, um, it's that's the, the, the bare root of it all. It's like, we might as well not go on. It's about survival, isn't it? And, and the idea you've got to laugh. That type of humor which comes from a place of understanding pain, you know, and then is mirrored in lighter aspects of the day, you know. For example, I mean, I have a friend of mine who was um, dying of cancer, and he was in a lot, a lot of pain. He's dead now. Like, he was in a lot of pain. And he was living with a friend of mine, a couple of friends, and, uh, and one night he came, my friend came back and he said to him, look, just 
just kill me, do you know what I mean? Do me, take the pillow and do me. I'll give you all the money I've got, do you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you the money I've got, just just do me. And uh, my friend was like, uh, well, this, this was my friend, the guy who spoke to you, said, uh, no, I can't do that, you know, do it, you know, do it your fucking self. That thing. Like, um, that was incredibly funny, <laughs> right, to me. <laughs> but, right, and he's like, no, I'm not going to do that, you do it yourself. Lazy sort. The guy couldn't even lift his arm. It's the lid. And they both laughed, right? So, but then my friend came in and said, "Well, how much did you have?" He goes, "A grand." He said, "Well, you, you, you're lucky it wasn't me." Because <laughs> if I'd have come home that night, you know, I'd have probably. I'm a bit hard up. I'm strapped and I'm on and I'd have done you for, you know, I'd done you for 50 quid. You know what I mean? <laughs> this guy is still terminal. Nothing's changed. They're still laughing. The moment is now. It's all about what happens in the moment and what are you going to do with the moment. You're either negative or are you positive. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. Um, hopefully, like, everybody that's involved in the making of it, it's a really special project, you know, and I think it will be a very special and delightful film. I think it'll be a very charming film, actually, a very delightful film. It feels good, and I think that that's... From being a part of it, I think, and good fun, and it's about friends. So they have incredibly serious baggage, well, and uh, so that's it. Does it's unforgiving in the baggage, but the, I think nothing changes when it comes to friends and fun and truth. So, you know, and there should be a little tear in there too. It's a really special program. It's a really special film. It's really special. So I hope they, you know, it's, they, they enjoy it. Um, I think we have to work on the swearing. <laughs> There's a lot of swearing in it. Succinct. Oh. You're good, man. How you doing? You sit in. Should I sit in? Yeah, yeah. Hello. I just said some awful shit about you, man. Did you? Yeah. Were you really rude? Yeah. Nice one. He's, I tell you, I had my back, he's, the other day. he's really bitchy. I <laughs> can't <laughs> say that. <laughs> yeah, put it in, it's funny. No, don't. It's a Bismarck him on the forehead. Don't. Get him out of his trailer. <laughs> Was it all going very well it's, until it's, I turned up? It's a I'm slap sorry. with a flaccid penis. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. Come on, let me get Benny. One I'm sec. The blokes at HBO will not like the idea of any act of Bismarcking. <laughs> <laughs> And the brothers. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> that must have gone on. Yeah, no, that didn't happen. I was slapping. Do you want us to do anything together? Sorry, or should I just let you yeah, no, get I'm on? You've probably got a flow going on. No, no, okay. but sit here. Sit, sit here. Sit anyway. So you want me to listen to it? Yeah, I just want right. you to correct me if I'm wrong. Like, I've got to ask. This is. This is I, I, I need no introduction. My name is Benedict Cumberbatch. I'm playing um, Alexander Masters, <laughs> who wrote the book. <laughs> yeah. Hello. I've been asked, what is the story about? Well, as the author, I'd be in a good position to so that's, that's that why I, I think I need, I need the author here for this answer. So that's all right. Well, I think it's about a very extraordinary relationship between two um, very unlikely friends, and um, in particular, the most extraordinary man, uh, Stuart Shorter, and um, how they came to meet, and and everything that his life has to do with the wider world, but at the same time, it's a deeply personal, deeply moving and funny story um, told through the eyes of their relationship. And uh, it's incredible. And um, it's extraordinary the amount of stuff that it touches on. Stuart has such a incredible, well, he can say any more about that than I can obviously, but he has such an incredibly rich, but damaged and difficult and fragile life. I mean. Anything that you could practically horrifically imagine going wrong with a, with a, with a childhood and an adulthood and an adolescence. But, but it's a murder mystery. But it's a murder mystery. It is a murder mystery. Yeah. Like, it's a who done it. It's like a who done it. You know, um, because of the way he structures it, which is, which is an ingenious move. And it's Stuart's idea. And it's backwards. backwards. What, what, to go backwards? Well, I think to I mean, find out who he was before, how things happened, really, rather than just telling it how it is. is it, that right? Two friends meet, two people meet, they become friends, one of them decides to write a book about the other, and through this they find out more about themselves and life and love and understanding, and then one of them dies. 
that's what the book's about. That's what it's about. That is what the book's but I mean, about. it's really a character study on humanity and uh, in, a, in a pocket of society which doesn't normally get a window opened on it, told by a, a fabulously um, energetic and wry um, cerebral donut. <laughs> like, <Me. laughs> like Alexander. He <laughs> <laughs> has a wonderful spin with, um, on it. I mean, it is, I mean, it, it, Alexander's almost like a sort of, he's like a, um, he is like an audience. He's like the middle class viewpoint into this incredibly uh, violent and, and, and he's quite auntie. closed off world. He's like you auntie know? looking at it. It's like your, your yeah. auntie looking at, with, with non-judgmental, he looking the under reader. the rock and going, Christ, that's Good somewhere. Lord, that's awful. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have the real, the real deal there all alongside. So it's like, it's, a, it's, very, it's like auntie and taxi driver together. Yeah. It's like, let's just spend a couple of weeks with Travis Bickle. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly what it's like. It, it's, 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 a, um, it's, just, it's an exceptional road trip buddy movie. Yeah. And on that note, I've got to go and do some ADR for another film. <laughs> <laughs> That's an exit for you.